LXL A-Level Maths, Mechanics, October 2021, question 4. A small stone is projected with speed 65 metres per second from a point O at the top of a vertical cliff. Point O is 70 metres vertically above the point N. Point N is on horizontal ground. The stone is projected at an angle alpha above the horizontal where tan alpha equals 5 twelfths. The stone hits the ground at the point A as shown in figure 3 and the stone is modelled as a particle moving freely under gravity. The acceleration due to gravity is modelled as having magnitude 10 metres per second squared. Using the model, we need to find the time taken for the stone to travel from O to A. The first thing I'm going to do here is we've been given the tan alpha. So let's work out our cos alpha and sine alpha because we're going to need these for the question. So if tan alpha equals 5 twelfths, if we think of this in a right angle triangle, there's our alpha. Tan is equal to opposite over adjacent, so the opposite side is 5, the adjacent is 12. But by a bit of Pythagoras, so by doing 5 squared, add 12 squared, and square rooting it, we get a hypotenuse of 13. So using this triangle, we can now see that sine alpha is equal to the opposite 5 over the hypotenuse 13, and cos alpha is equal to the adjacent 12 over the hypotenuse 13. We're now ready to start solving the questions. So with this one, as we don't have any distances horizontally, I'm going to use the vertical measurements to find the time taken. Now, I'm going to measure everything in the downwards direction. You can do everything upwards. That's fine as long as you are consistent with the values that you put down. So going downwards, we have a distance S of 70. Our acceleration, we're told, is 10. Our initial velocity is going to be minus because the velocity is going upwards and we're taking everything in the downwards direction. 65, but because 65 is at an angle, we want the vertical component, which is opposite the alpha. We're going to take sine alpha, but we've already worked out sine alpha is 5 thirteenths. So if we multiply that by 65, we get an initial upwards velocity of minus 25. And we're looking to work out T. So thinking of our SUVAT equations, we need something that features S, A, U and T. Well, that's going to be our S equals UT plus half AT squared. Substituting our values into this, we get 70 equals minus 25T plus a half times 10T squared. That's 70 minus 25T plus 5T squared. All of those are multiples of 5. So let's divide through by 5 and move everything onto one side. We get T squared minus 5t minus 14 equals zero. Now it's up to you how you solve this. You can use the function on your calculator. You can use the quadratic formula. It doesn't matter. I'm going to factorize it. So two things that multiply together to make negative 14, add to make negative five, and they're going to be negative seven and two. So we get t minus seven times t plus two equals zero. Now this would give us two answers, t equals seven and t equals negative two. But we're looking for the time it takes for the stone to travel from O to A. So it's got to be a positive number. So we're going to take the positive answer, which is T is equal to seven seconds. For part B, we need to find the speed of the stone at the instant just before it hits the ground at A. So we're going to need both components of the speed. We're going to need the horizontal and the vertical. So let's start with the easier one, the horizontal one. Well, it's traveling at 65 but this time it's adjacent to the angle, so it's 65 cos alpha. We know cos alpha is 12 thirteenths, so multiplying them together gives us an initial velocity to the right horizontally of 60. Now, because we're not dealing with any air resistance or anything like that here, that's going to be our final velocity as well. So when it hits the ground at A, it's going to have a horizontal velocity of 60 meters per second. Now let's deal with the vertical. Again, I'm just going to take everything downwards. So S is 70, our A is 10 as before, our U is minus 25, which we calculated in part A. And we also calculated that T is equal to 7. And the thing we're trying to work out is the final velocity V. So again, we need to think of our SUVAT equations, look for something that features these. There are a few choices here, but I'm going to pick something that doesn't use the T. 
because T is something we worked out in A. And I don't, just in case we made a mistake, I don't want to put that in. So we're going to pick something that uses V, U, A and S. So V squared equals U squared plus 2AS. So we get that V squared equals negative 25, all squared, plus 2 times 10 times 70, which equals 2025. So square rooting this, we get that V is equal to 45. So we've got our horizontal and vertical components now. To work out the speed, we just need to find the basically the hypotenuse of the triangle with the edges 45 and 60. So our speed is going to be the square root of 60 squared plus the 45 squared, which equals 75 meters per second. One limitation of the model is that it ignores air resistance. So part C, we need to state one of that limitation of the model that could affect the reliability of your answers. Now, there are quite a few options for this. We could say something like the size of the stone, potential spin on the stone, the effects of wind. There are quite a few, few things. But what I'm going to take is that in this question, we've been given gravity approximated to 10 instead of the usual 9.8. If you've enjoyed this video, remember to subscribe to the Doing Maths channel to keep up to date with all the latest releases.